So I wanted to ask you, what are some of the necessary elements that make a successful creative uh, um, collaboration? Well, the first thing is that film used to be think, thought of as the director is the true artist. So mm -hmm. it was called the auteur theory. And somewhere in the 80s, maybe even into the 90s, people began to think differently about making a film. They said, this is a collaboration between the greatest artists in each of their areas. I mean, imagine working with the greatest composers, the greatest makeup artists, the greatest actors, the greatest directors, and what a thrill that is when you think of how much they bring because they are masters at what they do. So the collaborative art of filmmaking follows the script from the script stage through every artist to look at what does each artist do along the way to create the film. And the script is really sometimes thought of as a guide or a blueprint. It's, it's one of the few art forms that is not complete when you do it. It's not complete <laughs> until all these different artists come in and do this great work with it. Now, what we did, the, fir the first two editions were done with, uh, I had a co-author, Ed Wetmore, who actually died in 2016, but gave me permission before that to do the third edition by myself. When we first did this, we interviewed 70 different artists, and then we've added interviews, and in this one, the third edition, I've added some more and also did a lot of Google <laughs> research as well. Um, <laughs> Now, and it isn't really exactly an interview book. What it is is that all these different artists talk about ideas so that, so I will discuss an idea. Let's, let's just talk about what a composer does. And then there might be a series of quotes from famous composers that expand the idea that I have introduced. So, um, and then there's a case study and we decided to keep the same case study as the second edition, which is A Beautiful Mind, um, just because it's it's a great film mm -hmm. and it's really, really difficult to talk to every artist on a film. And that was the whole idea of a case study. So the first edition, the case study was Dead Poets Society. And some of those quotes are integrated into this book. And then the second edition was a beautiful mind with the help of ron howard at getting to all these people except for the actors and ron <laughs> said it doesn't matter what i do um russell crowe and jennifer connelly are not going to talk to you so th there was so much written <laughs> online so i got great material in there for them um and and it is interesting because it's not easy to get these interviews and um but, I mean, literally, we did 70. We sat down with, I mean, I had lunch with Ron Howard. I went to Hans Zimmer's um, stu uh, music studio, who's the composer, and was on the, actually on a set with the com uh, Bill Conti, the composer, when he was recording the music. He invited us to come <sighs> and listen to a recording session. So, and we were in Leonard Nimoy's home sipping cappuccino and Lawrence <laughs> Kasdan's home. And I mean, it was, it was just, you know, great. It's rough. And, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it's a it's it was really, a tough game. It's really tough to sit with these people. <laughs> and um, so there were, there are some additions to those and uh, just lots of, lots of wonderful information in here that's really important to every artist because the actor should know what the editor is doing and the editor should know what the composer is going to do. But um, for the screenwriter, it's really important to know what people are going to do with your script and when what they're doing is fine and when what they're doing is you just cringe over that because you, you want great people working with it. Now, I mean, if you can imagine Steven Spielberg's work without John Williams 
or yes. without or without Janice Kaninsky as his cinematographer. I mean, or Kathleen Kennedy or is the Kathleen. Producer I mean, that. yeah, yes. all, his amazing collaborators he has. I mean, everyone thinks yes. of Steven Spielberg as one of the greatest directors of all time, which he is. But without this group of people around him, I mean, he doesn't have that magic. You have to. It, it, it is such a collaborative art, and people always forget about that because of this theory, the auteur theory, which, you know, like the Kubricks of the world and, you know, uh, Billy Wilder and, and Orson Welles and these kind of older uh, filmmakers, uh, Alfred Hitchcock. But all yes. of these guys had such a col- – I mean, they had collaborators for years. I know Ron Howard, he won't even move – on a movie unless his first AD is available and he's worked on it. So like, if his first AD, like they will stop them. We can't, not, can't go until the first AD is available. Yes. And people um, like Spielberg or a lot of, a lot of these other people, Clint Eastwood uses mm-hmm. a lot of the same people, Spike Lee. They say, we have such a shorthand. It's yeah. just so relaxed and it's so much easier because you know where everybody is, you know that you can trust them. Um, and so more and more people have this group around them that, as you say, goes as far as the assistant director. And uh, I mean, Lawrence Kasdan did so many movies with Carol Littleton as the editor. Mm-hmm. You, so you, you just say, yeah, when you work well with people, you want to keep working with them. It's hard, it's hard to even find people you can work with in this business. And when you find yes. them, you hold on tight. <laughs> 